Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air date is July 9th, 1955, and the title is Uncle Oliver. Hope you enjoy. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. This is it. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful, and a little lonely. Mr. Dillon? Ah, oh, sit down, Chaucer. Get yourself out of the sun. <laughs> it ain't only me you ought to get out of the sun. Oh, what do you mean? See them two fellows down the street there? You see them? Yeah? Uh -huh. Now, what about them? Well, they've been standing there most an hour, Mr. Dillon, arguing. And you've been listening to them for most an hour, huh? Oh, no, no, I, I was in Teeter's getting me a haircut. Oh. That, but I was watching them. The young one, he's the tall one, he don't say much. But the old one that keeps jabbering at him, I swear, I don't see how that boy can stand it. Well, all he has to do is walk off, you know. Yeah, I suppose. My, they sure do look like they never got far from the sod, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, he slammed that old fella into the wall. I knew he'd get enough sooner or later. He's hitting that old man again, Mr. Dunn. Yeah, they'll be using knives next. Come on. He stopped hitting him. He, he just kindly squeezing him now. Yeah. Okay, he, at least he made that old man quit talking at him. Now, well, that's one way of doing it. Let me go, buddy. You grab my rib. I ought to crack your neck. He'll do it, too, Mr. Dillon. All right, turn him loose, fellow. What? I said turn him loose. Now. All right. You're meddling, mister. It's my business to meddle. I'm the marshal here. Marshal? That's right. Well, I wasn't hurting him none. You're all right, ain't you, Uncle Oliver? Little bear hug ain't gonna ruin me. He didn't mean nothing by it, Marshal. Didn't mean nothing by it? Why, he liked to have killed you. Viney plays rough sometimes. You're his uncle, huh? Yeah, Viney's pa died not very long ago, and he he practically never did have ma, so I'm kind of taking care of him. Isn't he a little old and need taking care of I think I'm 22. You don't understand. Viney has lived all his life out on the prairie. This is the first time he's come to a town, but he's going to make out fine. Oh. You'll see. Oh, Uncle Oliver. No, I mean it. You'll be an important man someday, Viney. As important as Marshall here. Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. I know what it is, too, and I'd like it fine, Uncle Oliver. But I can't be Marshal. Now, use your head. I am using it. Why can't you be Marshal? Because they got him, that's why. I don't mean right now. You got to learn how first. And you know how to learn how? By working for this Marshal. You follow them around, now, help them out, find out all the things they've done. Oliver. Ain't I right, Marshal? No. 
What's wrong with it? Now, for one thing, I don't need a helper. Oh, everybody can use a little help. Chester Proudfoot gives me all the help I need. What's Chester Proudfoot? I'm Chester Proudfoot, doggone it. Oh. Well, there you are, Uncle Oliver. There I am, nothing. What do you want me to do? Get rid of Chester Proudfoot, shoot him or something? No, 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 here, now, look here. What kind of talk is that? Are you doing people crazy? Yeah, he's right, Viney. That's no way to talk. I'm surprised at you. You'd be more surprised if I did it, wouldn't you? Yeah, now. I'm going to find our wagon and get me some sleep. I'm tired of talking to you. He don't mean nothing by it, Marshal. He's young and hot-headed. Well, I sure hope you're right. He come to the city to make his way, and I'm trying to help him. I had nothing wrong with that. There is plenty wrong with that, the way he was talking. Well, no use arguing. I'm going to go do me some gambling now. I'll see y'all. All right. Why didn't they stay out on the prairie where they belong? I wouldn't worry about them, Chester. Well, you don't have to. It's me they was talking about. <laughs> Forget it. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. I thought you was taking Miss Kitty to dinner. Yeah, I am, but we got time for a drink. Well, I could sure use one. <laughs> This is it, L&M filters, it stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor, L&M's got everything, it's the best. L&M is best, stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. Let you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands up for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L&M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. Want some more coffee, Kitty? Mm, no, thanks, Matt. Yeah. Uh, tell me, did you find out their last name? Well, they didn't bother to tell me, but I ran into Moss Grimmick there, keeping their wagon at his stable. Uh-huh. And, uh, he said their name's Stang. Stang? Yeah. Uh-huh. They sure sound like a great pair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe in a few weeks in Dodge, around people, they'll start acting more civilized. It sounds like they're just plain simple-minded to me. Yeah, you'll meet them. Oliver, anyway, he's a... Gambling man. He is, huh? Yeah. What's his game, mumbly peck? Uh, he might surprise you, Kitty. Well, maybe. From what I've heard about him, he won't surprise any dealers I know. Uh-uh. Huh? What? You're about to meet Viney now. Oh. Marshal? Ah, hello, Viney. Uh, I don't mean to... Bust in on you and this lady marshal. That's all right. I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, this is Miss Russell Viney Stang. How do you do, lady? How do you do? It's about that job, Marshal, working for you. <laughs> well, I, I thought we'd been through that, Viney. I'm worried you might let Uncle Oliver talk you into something. Well, you can stop worrying. What I come to tell you is I changed my mind. I don't want that job. Well, that's fine, Viney. You don't get it. I don't want no part of it. That's what I come to tell you. Uh, Viney, you can quit worrying about the job. It isn't there. 
Now, uh, wh why don't you go to work for some freighter or a stable or something, huh? I just might do that, Marshal. I've been thinking on it. Well, good, good, fine. <laughs> like you say, well, I'm sorry busting in on you this way. I'll be going. You didn't do him justice, Matt. It'd take two of him to be simple-minded. I'm not so sure, Kitty. Uh, what do you mean, Matt? Nobody could be as simple as Viney. Not even Viney. Evening, Chester. Mm, things seems to be pretty quiet tonight. Uh, that's why I came back to the office. There's nothing doing on the street. Mm. They say there's a big Texas herd arriving in a couple of days. Oh? Uh -huh. About 5,000 head. Yeah, well, that ought to wake Dodge up. And keep it up. Yeah. I bet them cussed cowboys out there on the prairie right now figuring out some new way to tear this town apart. Yeah, they'd have to be pretty smart to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I, I throwed the mail on your desk there, Mr. Jones. No? Oh, yeah, I see it. Thanks. Uh, I'm going out back a minute. Okay. Chester! Chester! Hey, Chester! What's going on down there, Matt? What? Well, I don't know, Doc. You see Chester from up there? Oh, there's somebody lying in the high grass out there. Huh? Where? I'm pointing, Matt. Oh, It's Chester, Doc. He's been shot. Chester, you be... Get him up here to my office. Now, hurry up. I'll get things ready. There was nothing to do but forget about the gunman and carry Chester up to Doc's. He was still unconscious when I got him there. And after Doc took a look at the crease in his head, he wouldn't even guess how much longer he'd stay that way. And, of course, I knew now why Viney Stang had come up to me at the restaurant made such a big point about not wanting Chester's job. He was planning all the time to shoot him. So I went out after Viney, and I went almost everywhere. But I didn't find him. Finally, I tried the Long Branch, where I thought Oliver might be gambling, and that maybe he could lead me to it. Evening, Matt. Hello, Kitty. You look like you're about to strike. I am. Anybody in particular? Viney Stang. Huh? He ambushed Chester a while ago. Oh, no. Matt, he, he didn't... Uh, Chester's still unconscious, Kitty, but Doc thinks he's going to pull through. Oh. Well, you're sure it was Viney, did it? Sure enough to be looking for him. Last I saw him was in the restaurant. I thought Oliver might know something about him. Has he been in here? Well, he was till about an hour ago. He got sleepy. What? Huh? Well, that's what he said. He went out back, said he was going to have himself a nap. On the ground? Well, I'd be surprised if he ever slept in the bed. Yeah, you may be right. Well, he had supper out there, too. He quit the faro table and went to the bar and got some beer, and then he pulled some jerky out of his pocket and went out back to eat and sleep the whole thing off. Nothing's too good for Oliver. Well, I hope he won't mind my disturbing him. Uh, Matt, I'm... I'm going to go over to Doc's and see if there's anything I can do. Yeah. You, you tell him I'll be by later, huh? Yeah. All right. Now, 
Oliver. <laughs> Oliver, come on. Wake up. Uh, hello, Marshal. Wake up. I want to talk to you. Yeah, come on. Sure, sure. I'm awake. Come on. Man, got to get a little sleep now, man. Where's Viney, uh, Oliver? Viney? I don't know. When did you see him last? Why, this afternoon. You haven't seen him since? No. What do you want him for, Marshal? Something wrong? Chester's been shot. No. Ambushed. Ambushed? That's right. Well, you think Viney did it, huh? Well, he didn't, Marshal. Viney never killed nobody in his life. I didn't say he killed him. What? I said he shot him. Hit him in the head. Chester's still unconscious. He ain't dead? You seem disappointed. Now, look here, Marshal. We Steins don't go around shooting people. I won't stand for nobody saying we do. I want Viney, Oliver, and you're going to help me find him. You know his ways, you know where he might be. Viney didn't do it. He threatened to. And tonight he tried to fool me. Said he didn't want Chester's job. Chester doesn't have any other enemies I know of. But you're going to help me find Viney, or I'll let you wait in jail till I find him. Now, you take your choice. Jail? That's right. You said Chester ain't come to? What's that got to do with it? Well, if he dies, that'd be real bad, won't it? Yeah, real bad. Marshal, if Vine had done it, I'm as strong against him as you are, blood kin or not. I'll help you find him. I sure will. Look in the oasis here, Marshal. This is the last place I can think of where he might be. Any particular reason why he'd be in here? It's the littlest ragtail this saloon in town. Can't be many people in there. Vine is more at home where there ain't too many people. All right, I'll go in first, Oliver. Sure. There's nobody here but the bartender. And he's asleep. Well, let's wake him up and ask him. No, it wouldn't do any good. They don't talk to the law in this place. Come on. I'm just plumb confounded, Marshal. I don't know where to look now. We've been everywhere that boy might be. Maybe. Well, you think of some place then. You think of it, Oliver. I'm going back and see how Chester's coming along. You talk like you don't believe me. I believe you when you find Viney. All right, I'll find him. I'll look all night if I have Not to. all night, Oliver. It's about 10 o'clock now. You look till midnight. What do you mean? Have Viney in my office by midnight. Now, see, you don't believe me. I believe you. I just think you might have better luck without me hanging around. If he did it, I want him caught bad as you do. I told you that. And if he didn't do it, he's probably got a good alibi. But you find him. And don't you run. I'll track you down if it takes all year. Marsha, you're terrible wrong about me. I'll be waiting in my office, Oliver. <laughs> To the millions who smoke L&M. To the millions more who should try L&M. Here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, yet light and mild. So buy a pack of L&M's. And take a good close look at l and Superior Filter. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip. Because when it's added to l and Superior Tobacco, it actually tones up the taste. Actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. l and has got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. 
That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. got chest in the back room. How is he, Doc? Oh, I can't say for sure yet, but my guess is he's going to be all right. It'll take time, though, of course. Well, as long as he makes it. Uh, is he conscious? No, not now. But you mean he was? Well, he came to about a half an hour ago. He wasn't very clear, of course, but he was mumbling something. He got his eyes open for a few seconds. Didn't last long. He passed out right away again. What was he mumbling about? Did you catch any of it? Well, it was about the shooting. He saw who it was, man. He did? Mm-hmm. But he didn't get the name out, uh, Viney's or anybody else's. Oh. I asked him, I, but he passed out again before he could see it. I, uh... I don't suppose there's any way of telling how long it'll be before he comes around again. Huh? Oh, no, no. No way in the world. Might be in an hour and might not be for a day or two. Uh-huh. But he did see who it was. Oh, yeah, sure. But he didn't say who. So, that's no help. Yes, it is, Doc. How? If Chester saw Viney, then Viney must know he did. He won't make him feel very easy. Well, you've got him in jail, haven't you? No. But it won't take long now. Oh, and Doc... While I'm gone, you lock this door and you keep it locked, huh? Sure. Hello, Oliver. I ain't found him yet, Marshal, but I'm going to. Uh, how's Chester? Oh, Doc thinks he's going to be all right. He... Came to a minute or so. He did? Yeah. Long enough to tell Doc he saw who shot him. But he didn't get the name out. Oh. When he does, it's all the evidence I'll need to put Viney in prison for a long time. But uh, there's one good thing. If Chester don't die, Viney don't hang. What I'm worried about is that he's bound to hear Chester's still alive and try to finish him off before he can talk. Marshal, I swear I'll run him down before he does anything like that. He's in bad enough trouble now. Yeah, the way things are, I'm not going to wait for you to do it alone. You look where you think best, Oliver. I'm going to cover the south side of town again. If you find him, you take him to my office and wait. Okay, Marshal. All right, let's get started. <laughs> As I left Oliver and walked down Front Street, I noticed a figure standing in the shadows directly across from where we'd been talking. I guessed it was Viney, but I couldn't be sure. And at the moment, it didn't matter much anyway. I walked on a ways. Then I ducked up an alley and ran around back to the rear of Doc's place. A handful of pebbles brought him to his window, and he lowered the fire rope for me, and I was soon inside. We pulled the rope up and locked the window, and then went into the front office to wait. The door's still locked, Matt. He can't get in. Yeah, he'll knock, Doc. When he does, you open the door fast and get behind it and stay there. <laughs> yes, I'll stay there, all right. Matt, are you sure Viney's coming up here? He's got to shut Chester up before it's too late, doesn't he? But he must know I'm here with Chester. Yeah, that's right, Doc. Oh, 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 you mean he aims to walk in here and shoot me, too? You must be tired tonight, Doc. Oh. Yeah. Shall, I, shall I open it now? Well, I'm ready if you are. Now, you watch yourself, man. All right, go ahead, open it. 
I'm coming. I'm coming. Doc, where are you? All right, drop it. No. All right, Doc. He's through. Why, Matt, it's Oliver. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who's that? Stand back, Doc. I'm sure. You, you went and killed Uncle Oliver. I had to, Bonnie. Well, why didn't you wait? I'd have stopped him. Then why didn't you stop him downstairs? I couldn't get over there fast enough. Where have you been, Viney? Uncle Oliver told me to go wait for him by the river this evening. But I figured he was up to something. And then I heard about Chester and I knew. I've been following him ever since... I was afraid to show myself. I I thought you'd shoot me, Marshal, just like you shot him. I told you I had to shoot him. But he was only trying to help me like he promised Pa he would. He tried too hard. All I want... All I want is to go home. I didn't want Chester's job. I, I told you that. Don't you even remember? Yeah, I remember but you forgot something, Viney. What? You forgot to tell your Uncle Oliver. And now our star... William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. L&M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.